Allow me to introduce you to Hess's law, a useful tool to calculate enthalpies of reaction that cannot be measured directly, and one of A-level chemistry students' worst nightmares. But first, let's take a look at some definitions. Standard enthalpy of combustion is the enthalpy change when one mole of a substance is completely burnt in oxygen under standard conditions, these being 25 degrees C and atmospheric pressure. Combustion will always be an exothermic process. The energy is given out from making bonds with oxygen. The more oxygen a compound has already, the less energy it will produce as a fuel. So for instance, burning one mole of methane will give out more energy than burning one mole of methanol. The equation associated to the standard enthalpy of combustion of carbon or graphite is the following. For carbon monoxide, however, this would not be correct, as the definition of enthalpy of combustion is the combustion of one mole of the substance it is referring to, in this case, carbon monoxide. If we place the two in front of it, we would be burning two moles of carbon monoxide, which would give out twice as much energy. When given an enthalpy for a substance, keep it to one mole, and modify the number of moles of the rest of the substances in the reaction accordingly. This works for standard enthalpies of formation as well. Standard enthalpy of formation is the enthalpy change when one mole of a substance is created from its elements under standard conditions. This process is usually exothermic, but it can be endothermic. The standard enthalpy of formation of an element in its standard state will always have a value of zero. So for instance, the enthalpy of formation of molecular oxygen from molecular oxygen will be zero, as no bonds need breaking or making, whereas the formation of ozone from molecular oxygen will not be zero. Here you can see the equation for the standard enthalpy of formation of methane. Note that for the formation of chloromethane, we are making one mole of chloromethane from its elements. Finally, I included the formation of benzene as it is an example of an endothermic process. Sometimes the values of a standard enthalpy of formation and a standard enthalpy of combustion coincide, as they might be the same chemical process. Here is another example. And here he is. That's Hess. That's the guy that made your lives as chemistry students a misery. If you feel the urge to hurl verbal abuse at him, please do so now in a generous manner. OK, Hess's law. Let's get into it. Hess's law states that the total enthalpy change for a chemical reaction is independent of the route or pathway taken. It stands to reason that in a closed system, if A turns into B, the enthalpy change will be the same whether it goes directly from A to B, or if an intermediate C is formed first, which then turns into B, as energy is neither created nor destroyed. Here we are asked to calculate the enthalpy of formation of carbon monoxide. Now this can't be measured directly, as the reaction between carbon and oxygen tends to give a mixture of carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide and soot, regardless of keeping the moles of carbon and oxygen in a 2 to 1 ratio. The question provides us with two known enthalpies to work with, so I will write the equations they represent next to them. Then, I'm going to add the equation for the enthalpy of combustion of carbon to my diagram. Now I can add the equation for the enthalpy of combustion of carbon monoxide, which completes my diagram. Note that the products of both combustion reactions coincide. Now find where all the arrows start from and where all the arrows end. This will allow us to determine the two routes for which the enthalpy changes are identical, meaning the sum of the enthalpy changes in route 1 equals the sum of the enthalpy changes in route 2. Now you could proceed to substitute the values here, however I prefer to leave that till last, as sometimes students can get the signs mixed up, typically leaving out a negative. Also, some questions will just require you to show the equation for Hess's law like the one we'll see next. In this exam question, they want you to find the enthalpy of formation of pentane, so it stands to reason that I will add the elements that form pentane in the box below. Note that the enthalpy of formation of oxygen is zero, as I so kindly explained earlier. Next, I will add the equations for the enthalpies of formation of carbon dioxide and water to complete the diagram. But Mr Shepley, why are you multiplying the enthalpy of formation of carbon dioxide by 5? Ah, I'm glad you asked me that question. Well, the equation demands we produce 5 moles of carbon dioxide. By definition, the enthalpy of formation of carbon dioxide is the enthalpy change when one mole of carbon dioxide is formed from its elements. As 5 moles have been formed, we will expect 5 times the enthalpy change. The same happens with the enthalpy of formation of water. We multiply the enthalpy change by 6. Finally, I'll put together the equation and rearrange. The answer to the question is B.
An alternative way of tackling these questions, especially when it's a multiple choice question and you just don't have the time to be building a diagram, is by adding together the equations you are given. In our equation, carbon monoxide is a product, whereas in the third equation it is a reactant. So if we invert this equation it becomes a product, however the enthalpy change is sine as we are using the backward reaction. By inverting the second equation we can cancel out lead and lead oxide, besides carbon dioxide and excess oxygen. Finally, add up the enthalpies to get your answer. Well, there you have it. That's five minutes of your life that you ain't getting back. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and just subscribe if you didn't. Until next time.